Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over how to get more realistic looking terrain inside of Cinema 4D. Just overall better terrain. So this is just a uh, Cinema 4D terrain that I just popped in here. And as you can see, I mean, it kind of looks all right, but it's, you know, it's a Cinema 4D terrain. It's not something made in a terrain generator software. It doesn't look that great. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use Houdini and I'll show you what that looks like here. So as you can see, it's a lot more realistic looking. Um, looks a lot better, has a lot of more, a lot more undulation, a lot better terrain just in general. Plus if you look, it kinda has some, um, some erosion. So if I actually reset this back to zero, you can see that this is what it looks like without any erosion. And as I click play here, it simulates some erosion and eventually we get to what we have right here. So you can get all of this uh, working just directly inside of Cinema 4D. And there's a bunch of controls that we'll set up. We go into our asset here and actually it's in the terrain generator. We can change the size. So if we want to change the size here, uh, something smaller, let's actually jump back to the beginning so that we don't simulate everything. You know, you can make it smaller. Um, we can change the amplitude of the noise, make it a lot more rough or a lot um, smoother. Just undo that. We can change the noise size. So I'll actually just set this back up to 500 by 500. A little bit easier to see this. We can change the size of the noise. So it is, we bring this super low, obviously it gets super noisy and distorted. If we bring this up more, it kind of flattens out just because the noise is getting bigger and bigger. But let's go ahead, uh, set that back for now. And let's set this back down somewhere a bit lower, something like that will work. And then we can also change the type of noise that we have. So we select one of these different noises Obviously, it's going to give us different results. I'll have to adjust the other settings accordingly. Um, I like the sparse convolution one just because it creates a nice little noise. As well as, let's see, can I reset this to default? Yeah, there we go. So if I reset that back to default, um, we can change the, so this I have this blur setting because if it doesn't have that and we simulate up here, it's going to create, you'll see, this is good. If you look right here, you can see that the terrain just kind of looks all janky. Um, it's almost like it doesn't have enough resolution, um, but the more resolution that you add, the it doesn't go away. So that's why we have this blur in here. Um, I just have that set to one as the default, just to give us some nice results. So let's jump into Houdini and show you how we do this. So first off, we're gonna jump, drop a geometry node in. And then we're going to drop a height field in and zoom out here. I'm actually going to set this to 500 by 500 just to match what we have. Because um, if you see, if we jump back into Cinema 4D, as we go away here, it starts to clip some of our uh, geometry. So we set this to 500. It makes it so we can view, view the whole uh, geometry um, all, all at once. So. You can also scale it down, um, but that's on you if you want to do that. Um, we're going to drop in a height, height field noise next. And this is going to actually just give us the noise that we have, you know, that, we, that we see and distort um, the height field. So like I said, I'm leaving this as sparse convolution. I'm actually going to drop this amplitude down to something a little bit smaller since our our height field is only a 500 by 500. And then I'm also gonna drop this in half as well. That way we just have a little bit less distorted and a little um, a little bit smaller noise. The rest of these settings, I'm just gonna leave the same. Um, like just to kind of explain these a little bit more though, the amplitude, like I said, is going to bring this up and down and make your noise a little bit stronger. The element size is going to bring the size of the noise down, up and down as well. Um, and you may, I actually didn't include this in my HDA, but you, I probably should have. 
is the offset. We'll uh, we'll add that in. I'll show you how to add that in in a, a little bit here. You can also change how it's um, affecting our train. So you can subtract difference. You can do all these different these different types of of noise here. So that you this maximum is going to make it so your default train obviously is set at zero. And so this is going to just keep your base geometry uh, at the, I guess, sea level or whatever, your, your zero. It won't go below zero. If we set this back to add, you can see that it's going below zero. So if you want, you can add this into as well and maybe have this set to something like maximum and add in some other noise as well. But for now, we're just going to leave this as add. And then we're going to add our height field the road. So the way Houdini works, you when you're adding in nodes, you can start typing something. It's context sensitive. So if you type in H E and then road like E R, you get all of the noises that start with or all of the, the nodes that start with that. So just a little tip there, you don't have to actually spell everything out. You can kind of do a little shortcut. So this is going to give us our erosion and it's going it has a bunch of settings over here but it's going to colorize our terrain so just to make it easy and get rid of that we're going to add in first the height field blur wire this up this is going to be super strong to start off with which is why i said let's just set it to one that way it keeps our nice details but it also gets rid of those jagged edges that you saw without it and then we're going to convert our height field oops wrong node there so let's convert height field. This is needed so that Cinema 4D actually knows what it's working with because Cinema 4D doesn't know what height fields are and you won't be able to edit it later on anyways. So now that gets rid of our colorization to our terrain and we can just leave this and edit in here as we see fit. So there's all sorts of different settings in here. I'm not gonna go through them all but I will set this global erosion rate to two just so that it erodes a little bit quicker. That way you don't have to simulate as much during the simulation inside of Cinema 4D. Uh, we'll also set that up so that you can actually edit that inside of Cinema 4D as well. As you can see here is if I click play, it's going to start eroding our terrain away and it looks pretty good. I will say that the Houdini erosion doesn't have those super jagged edge um, inside of, or inside of Houdini, it doesn't have those super jagged edges and it looks a little bit better. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'm guessing it's probably to do with Cinema 4D's native shader that's put on everything. The normal or fong angle, as Cinema 4D calls it, is probably not set as high as, as Houdini, Houdini's is. But this is a super simple, quick setup and this gives us our train. So now we just need to set up our controls for it. So we're gonna jump back out into the geometry. We'll just set this to terrain generator. And then we're gonna go up here and click edit parameter interface. And we're just gonna drop down all of these and then select them all and make them invisible because we don't wanna see them. And then we're just gonna drop in a folder and we're just gonna call this settings. Shut up, Creative Cloud. <laughs> um, so once we jump in here, uh, or once we have this set up, actually let's make that settings. Once we have that set up, that folder, we can jump actually back into the um, actual node tree here. And we just select our nodes we wanna um, get settings from, and we just drag them on over. So I'm gonna drag the size over and then you're probably gonna wanna make it a little bit cleaner, so just add some separators in. That's what, if I jump back in here, gives us these lines just to kind of separate the different setting types. So jump back over here, add our noise. We'll probably want the amplitude and the element size. Oops, I guess those aren't wanting to go below. Um, that would be why. And actually drag them into the folder. So the, you can change the names of these, this is what I did. Um, this will just change the label, change it to whatever you want. So something like um, noise size, and then 
probably like noise, oops, noise, amplitude, set it to whatever you want for all of these. Like I said, I'm gonna bring over this global erosion rate, drop that into, it's not wanting to drop into the folder for some reason. There we go. Um, and actually, before I forget here, you're probably going to want to, where was the, the noise offset? So you're gonna wanna bring the noise offset into our settings here and we'll just call this, I guess we'll call it noise offset. So this will act kind of like a seed. So if I actually, I'll just click apply for now and accept. If I jump back to frame one so we don't have to simulate. If I change this global offset, and let's actually change it back here. And maybe not, let's change it right here. So if I change this, it's going to offset our noise and kind of give us a different seed, a whole different look to our, our terrain. So let's jump back and just go back to the edit parameter interface, add another separator in and height field blur. Um, I'm gonna add in, I don't need the method. We'll just add in this. I don't know why it's not, there we go. Separator, there we go. And then separate the settings again. And I think, oops, if I can get this to go, there we go. Last thing you probably want is to adjust the density. For some reason, this really does not wanna, not wanna work. I'm not sure why that is. It's working fine before. Anyway, so the density will control your actual polygon count. So I'm just gonna drag this off screen for now. So if I set this to two, it's going to make it a lot more dense, give us a lot more resolution. If I drop it down more, it's going to give us a lot less resolution. Or if I set it to like 0.1, it's gonna give us a really basic terrain, which we don't really want. So I'm just gonna leave that at one for the default and any settings like this is why i set these settings before like the height field noise set all of that any settings that you set um, before you drag these settings over here are going to hold over so if i look at the noise amplitude you can see that if i go over to the channels this is going to be the default value so you can change it in here as well but that's 250 which is what we have set right there so uh, make sure you just save yourself a little bit of time and set your settings before you actually go and adjust the, or before you go in and set up the node interface here. So that's all I'm gonna set up for now. You guys can, you'll probably wanna add in some more for these erosion, different erosion type stuff. Uh, I would just play around with the different settings in here. So your thermal, rotability, hydro, all these different settings, play around with them, see which ones actually give you some different results and stuff that you actually would like to include in your HDA, and then set those up in the settings as well. And then from there, to create your digital asset, you just go create digital asset, and then name it whatever you want, and then click accept, and then it'll, you have to click accept again, and it'll take you through and create your digital asset. To bring those actually into Cinema 4D, you just go up to extensions, go to Houdini engine and load asset, and then it'll bring in this thing right here, which is basically just your digital asset. And it'll have all of the settings that you see inside of your actual Houdini uh, asset, the, all the things that you set up in the, in the parameter interface, those all show up here as well. So super simple, super easy to create some really nice terrain inside of Cinema 4D. It's a lot better than the terrain uh, that's actually native to Cinema 4D. It doesn't look very good, it doesn't give you very good results, and doesn't have a lot of controls or a lot of intuitive controls, at least in my opinion. So I prefer to use this method. And just to show you here, if I get rid of this blur 
And if I up the density, so let's set this to like four. See, it doesn't really get rid of the, the jagged edges here. If you convert this to a actual terrain, and then if you edit this fong angle, it's probably going to do what you want. Or at least it's going to smooth it out a little bit. And it didn't, didn't uh, smooth out as much as I thought it would. But that's why we have the noise in there. Or not the, not the noise, but the blur. So that you don't have to worry about doing any of that. You can just go ahead and stick some blur on there. If you do crank this up too far, like I said, it will blur out all of your nice details just give you kind of a lumpy looking terrain which isn't necessarily what you want all the time so I think one is a is a solid number it gives you a nice balance between smoothness and your details so hopefully this wasn't too difficult and um, helped you out help you create a lot better train instead of Cinema 4D without having to actually leave the program. It does take a little bit of setup to actually do, um, but once you do, with all of these Houdini HDAs, you can reuse them in all of your projects and, and inside of Cinema 4D, you don't have to continue to remake them. You just load them up and they create all this stuff for you. Just set up whatever settings that you want and you can get all sorts of different looks and pretty much just create anything that you would inside of Houdini that is compatible with Cinema 4D and do it all inside of Cinema without having to uh, having to leave and export different files and everything. Makes your workflow just a little bit um, smoother and, and cleaner without having to you know keep adding more files to, to keep track of. So hopefully this helped you out. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. I'll try to make sure I get to all of them and help you out if you do have questions. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.